Assalamualaikum everyone Today we are going to do the color glazing chart So all you need is two water containers A flat brush Old cloth And palette with your watercolors on Right, first of all clean your brush And you can pick up your pigment I'm starting with yellow you need as much color because you're going to cover the whole stretch so you can work from um, columns or you can work from rows so I am going to start with rows since I'm using a watercolor resistant pen or water resistant pen I can just brush along across the lines so the pen line or pen ink won't smear I forgot to mention that you need also your watercolor glazing chart we are going to use 10 colors and the colors are yellow orange red light blue dark blue light green dark green reddish purple bluish purple and brown I'm doing a second layer because my first layer was too light you can add as much layer as you want but I'm just stopping at second layer right? because I still need to retain that transparent look the difference between uh, mixing color chart and color glazing chart is the mixing you have to mix the colors in the palette and then you apply it so uh, mixing doesn't happen on paper but with the color glazing chart you are actually mixing the colors on paper all right if you notice later on in this video I have mixed the colors like reddish purple, um, bluish purple on the palette but I have glazed it with the colors from the rows and columns so mixing is you mix on the palette glaze is when you mix it on the paper that means you have to wait until one layer dries and then you apply the next layer so the keyword to glazing is you wait until the layer on the paper dries and then you apply it in contrast to um, the color mixing chart the glazing chart is much more vibrant glazing is also layering of different colors that's why it looks vibrant after it dries now I'm gonna show you how to clean up if you made a mistake right I purposely let the color go over the line so how to clean this mistake you wash your brush clean and then take off a bottle a bit while um, damping it on the cloth and then you rub it on the paint that's on the paper while the paper is still wet you can also do this when the color has dried but it works effectively when the color is still wet and you use a damp brush wipe it all right but it's better if you damp using a cloth or tissue right so i'm wiping it with a damp brush again just to make it clean and then yeah you dab it instead of you wipe with cloth you can use tissue or cloth to dab right and then once it dries you can start painting again
with the glazing chart you will also notice that you are able to control the value it slowly go darker when you add different color after it dries now I'm working on the orange if you notice I did not completely color the rows of orange because I don't want the color to bleed to either yellow or red okay that's why I leave it like that and if you notice I colored the alternative rows again because I don't want the colors to bleed to the other boxes or other rows so that's why I work on alternative rows until it dries then I work on the subsequent rows also for you to remember you can't glaze over darker colors so make sure the color is light and dry now I'm working on columns right again I'm not coloring completely the boxes right now notice how the color changes all right and then compare it to your um, mixing chart and see how this is much much more vibrant Often the transparent colors usually give a white burn outcome. So I don't make my colors opaque, opaque. I don't make it uh, really thick. You can also, um, this technique is called wet on dry. That means your paint is wet and your paper is dry. But you can also work wet on wet. That means while the paint is wet, you add on the next layer, but I wouldn't advise it so much. It's better if you do it while, it, while it's dried. So a glazing chart is how the colors look layered on top of each other, while a mixing color chart looks how the colors are mixed in each palette. I actually waited for around four hours until I work on the columns because I want my colors to completely dry um, even though my colors are very thin and um, I use a lot of water and for the fact that I know my uh, watercolor paper absorbs water quickly I still want to make sure that it's completely dry i have checked other videos on youtube and they advise that it's better if it's dry and then you start working on it or else you would not get a very neat and clean outcome of the glazing chart Alright, this is the complete chart. Right, notice how vibrant the colors are compared to your mixing chart. Right, make sure you label every rows and columns. The same colors on the rows should apply on the column as well. And there you have it.